Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in chapter one talking about managing the test activities. And today we are getting started with our next segment that is 1.4, the project test strategy. And as a part of it, we'll be looking at the next uh, sub-segment that is 1.4.1, choosing a test approach. And would we'll understand what exactly test approach is all about when it comes to a test process altogether. Well, to begin with this particular topic, we would first like to clear the context of test approach to every one of you, and at the same time, give you an introduction to what exactly organizations may have in real world compared to that of what you will be learning theoretically here. So to get started, of course, uh, we do have a quick context here to understand that what exactly test approach is all about. Is that a document? Where does it exist in the organization? Do we have it in our organization? So the journey certainly gets started with the major documents on the top of the hierarchy. The first thing we have is test policy in an organization. And this describes why an organization tests. So it describes every single thing about your testing as a service to any organization or any client or any particular project that why do you test a system? So you describe your test levels, you describe your test activities, you describe your testing skills, your capabilities, your team as an asset and all that practices which you've blended with your flavor to describe what is your policy of testing, right? And again, mostly you would see this document into a service-based organization. In a product-based organization, you would see it as more of like quality policy which describes what is more important when it comes to quality for us, right? Once we have the test policy, which is an organization level document, we will look forward to work on the project level. And that's where the next document comes into picture, which is testing strategy, okay? So the test strategy is again a document which describes how will you test this particular project. So yes, it is a project specific documentation describing the approach to test a particular project. And indeed, as we remember from our foundation, the uh, principle number six explained to us that testing is context dependent. And of course, each project is different from another. Thus, your test process will also vary. Your approach to test that particular product will also vary. So it might be driven by standards, different techniques, different methodologies, different approaches and whatnot, maybe different levels as well and different skill set required to perform those activities. So the test approach would basically be answering that how will you test this particular application or this particular project? What would be all these key points like the test levels, the test techniques, the methods, approaches, etc. So again, the test approach is a very key document to describe your team members and other stakeholders that what is your approach of testing this particular project and may provide a lot of information coming up from the other stakeholders or may define it to the other stakeholders that what do you demand from them? What exactly do you need to assist to your testing and your activities? And then from the test approach, we derive it as the test plan, which would have what will you do in order to test the project. And that's where it becomes very crucial that how your approach gets blended into the test plan. Okay, so it's not that simple and straightforward. As a test manager, we need to describe the real approach to follow the same. So it's not necessary that every organization will have it as a separate document. Sometime it can be a part of your test plan itself. First you describe the strategy and then you continue with the plan because strategy will answer how and test plan will answer what. So you define everything there. Anyways, to get started with and deep dive into what exactly the content is trying to cover, we'll get into the syllabus here. It says, the project test strategy guides all testing activities within a project and details objectives resources, uh, schedules, and responsibilities. The strategy must be tailored to unique requirements of the project. The key decisions include the selection of the test levels, test types, and test techniques for static and dynamic testing and any other test practices, which includes like scripted testing, manual testing, back-to-back -back testing, and whatsoever. In theory, all test types can be performed at any test levels, and any test technique can be applied to any test type at any test level. In practice, the appropriate selection and combination of these choices have significant impact on the effectiveness and efficiency of testing. For example, code maintainability can often be evaluated more effectively and efficiently using static code analysis or code review. 
Now let's look at this one more time. Of course, when we say that the test strategy is defining the overall, you know, approach of how exactly we are going to test this particular system. However, theoretically, if you remember from foundation, we told you that there are no restrictions that which test level can be applied uh, at what point of time and which technique can be applied to which test level. Same way, we don't have any restriction like white box or black box can be performed at which level. We told you that none of the level is restricted. Same way, functional and non-functional is not restricted to any particular level. If required, a performance test engineer can join you at the unit testing level and perform the required checks on the code from the performance point of view. And at the same time, functional testing team will be doing the functional checks on the unit testing. So indeed, the same thing goes with everything else. The levels, the techniques, the types are not restricted to each other. But practically, in the real world, a management person, that is test manager, should be responsible to identify the most appropriate point of applying a particular type, level, technique, etc. And at the same time, the combination would matter. So the example what we have took is uh, that is the maintainability, which is a non-functional test. It basically measures, code maintainability measures that whether this code is updatable and can be updated over a period of time. Like nothing is hard coded. Everything is possible to be changed for another. And yes, we look forward to scan the code for this to find out that whether the code is maintainable enough. But of course, doing this after system testing could be too late or not something where we look forward to do it. So we can join certainly in the static analysis of the code itself and the code is being implemented. And as a part of static analysis, which is code review, which anyways we have to do to find anomalies in the code, we can parallelly conduct a maintainability check here. That is whether the codes which we just analyzed are maintainable also. So we can fulfill two goals at the same time by being effective and efficient enough by performing it at the right time. And as another example, as I gave you, that was performance test. Same way if we can talk about security testing. What is the point of security testing team surprising us after we have built the system or system testing is over? They will have only surprises for us and we'll have a lot of rework to fix those issues. So we request security testing team to join us right from the design phase or coding phase at least to start analyzing the code for any kind of vulnerabilities or conduct static analysis to scan through the code to find out if we are following the secure coding practices and have we left any kind of vulnerabilities there. Now that would be the right time to fix these issues during the implementation itself rather than waiting for system testing to get over to get started with non-functional testing. And that pretty much makes sense. So that is what we are trying to say, that a test manager should look forward to organize the test levels, the test types, like white box, black box, functional, non-functional, in a very perfect combination relevant to their project at what is most applicable at that point of time and would be also cost effective. And not only that, it should be efficient enough. When we conduct it, it should return the values, right? The third important point here, on the other hand, Performance efficiency may be better evaluated through scripted system test due to the interaction of internal components or the usefulness of functionality may be better validated with users through collaborative, collaboratively developed manual acceptance test. Choosing the best approach for the test strategy can be complex process that can be influenced by organizational test strategy, uh, project context, and many other aspects. So, however, we would like to say here that no matter we come up with our best plan, best, best strategy possible, there might be some factors which further influences it. Do not forget, as the document is under the hierarchy, that is, there is a policy and then you have the strategy, we also have to make sure that our strategy is in line to that of the policy. Okay, And at the same time, there could be some organizations internally or externally identified, which are followed at the organization level. So we cannot just overrule them for a particular project. So it's not necessary standards get applied to a project only. It can even be at the organization level, right? For example, automotive industries, if you talk about organization like Continental, Bosch, uh, you know, Mercedes, etc., they follow ISO 26262 at the organization level, right? A spies for the process improvement at the organization level. So indeed, uh, these are the things which we can certainly consider as a factor which further influences the definition of our test approach, okay, our test strategy. Finally, to add here, of course, is to discuss on selecting and combining test levels, test types, and test technique is therefore critical to an effective project testing strategy as it significantly influences the efficiency and effectiveness of testing. So at the end, all we want to conclude here by saying that it's not something we randomly just do things. 
the test manager should have the capabilities of defining these uh, right combinations that what should be more effective and efficient in terms of testing when we talk about the factors like test levels, test techniques, test types, etc. to be applied and what should be the right blend of that, the right time in the life cycle to be conducting and right resources for that. So put together will basically define what exactly your strategy or effective strategy for your project will be. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll get back to you with more details on other contexts related to defining the strategy of that. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.